Hey guys, Eric with Blue Line Fishing. Welcome back to the channel. Your time's important to me. And what we're going to do in today's time is going to take a look inside the tackle box, what's in my tackle box, and how I arrange my tackle storage. And what do I do if I'm fishing out the small boat, the big boat, or just walking the banks and, and pond hopping? So stick with me. I think you're going to enjoy it. All right, guys, let's get into this. Uh, we're going to check out what's this is my bass fishing box. I have another one set up for just pan fish, like I'm going out and fishing for crappie, bluegill, things like that. But today, what we're going to look at is my bass gear and the lures and what I have packed in here for that. So, with that being said, we'll pop the top off. Uh, this thing, first off, is obnoxiously heavy just because I got too much stuff packed into it. But it is an Okeechobee Fats uh, storage system. I've been using it for years, it's been super durable. Um, you know, I've, I've drug it in and out of countless, countless boats and trips, and it, it's held up really well. With that being said, I'll give you guys a look here at how I have my baits um, arranged. And I, I'm going to open up each one so you can check it out. See my top waters, creature baits, tubes and swim jigs, regular jigs, and then get into all the different crank baits and the depth that those baits run. So with that being said, we'll get in here. We're going to get into all the pockets and, and what we've got going on in those too. So... First box here, top water box, start from the top end, and I'm getting ready to switch all my gear over to uh, lure lock, so I'm gonna kind of, I don't know if you want to, can you get me in in that too, or yeah. how, how does, I think it work better, I can take some of the baits out to look at, does that look okay? Yeah. All right guys, so top water box here first, you know, I've got my frogs in here, uh, poppers like the popper R, some of the rebel poppers. Uh, and also included in the top waters, the suspending baits like these uh, Smithwick Rogues. I absolutely love the Smithwick suspending rogue. Use it a lot. Uh, Rapala slash bait and things like that. Um, give you a little closer look here on this one. Probably my my number one frog here is the the scum the pro scum frog in this black with the copper colored legs. I absolutely love that. Uh, it's a great bait. And there's a chartreuse and green one that I do pretty well with too. So that's kind of what's in the top water box right here um, and then I'll show you I've got some buzz baits and stuff in a different different container all right guys so the next is the creature baits box um, and I've got all different types of creature baits down in here give you a look at those a little bit of everything um, you know I've got the the sweet beaver type baits uh, I've got the crawl baits and I use these as standalone this is actually a Thunderhawk uh, creature bait which I really really like same here Thunderhawk just a different color pattern on that but um, I use these from anywhere from just fishing by themselves, weightless, or if I'm waiting them uh, for punching or Texas rigging, things like that. And I also uh, use them as some of these as chatterbait trailers as well. So this is kind of a look in here. And, and I arrange mine into, like say, the crawls, what I've got here. And then I've got my shaky head rigs. And I'll show you another box I've got with that, with the shaky head stuff and everything there. But this is kind of just a quick little overview of what's in the this is a net bait pack of crawl and um, kind of what's in my crawl box here creature baits all right guys so this is the swim bait box um, I use obviously the swim baits in here use a standalone swim bait or a trailer or sometimes on a spinner bait or a chatter bait give you a look at what I've got in here a uh, little bit of everything uh, these are the uh, 13 I think they're the cheros right here and then my favorite, and this one's trimmed down already, but this is a, uh, this right here is a Zacco, and uh, made by Gary Yamamoto, probably my favorite chatterbait trailer out there right now. Um, I've got the, some of the Reaction Innovation uh, little dippers, swim baits, so a lot of different swim baits. I've also got the swim bait head attachments here, uh, like this one's a, the VMC with the screw lock on it and stuff. So I'm trying to arrange everything where it's, it's I can find stuff easily when it comes to uh, what I need and quickly. So, you know, I keep all my swim baits and mental imitation baits in this box here. Kind of a hodgepodge of, of companies and manufacturers, some two baits too, but all MO, minnow imitators for the most part. All right, guys. So one of my favorites, the jig box. Um, this has got a whole a lot of different types and styles, shapes, sizes of jigs. Uh, some of these jigs are the ones that I've made, for example, like these are my Ripjaw Lures jigs. That's a small one, 3 16th ounce. And as you can see, I try and keep them in somewhat of a color-coded fashion here with my black and blues and then my pumpkin colors here. And I've got my, 
my kind of my swim bait style right here. Like this is a, it's a different style head on it, but this is a swim bait or jig right here, uh, or swim jig, I should say, not a swim bait, but a swim, um, swim jig. So I've kind of got all those swim jigs aligned over here. Uh, and then I've also got a few trailers, but I'll show you another section where I keep most of my jig trailers at. And, you know, this is a raised by weight. There's anything in here from 3 16 ounce all the way up to one ounce jigs. This is another one of my, my jigs that I make in that backwater bluegill color. It's been really popular uh, this past year and done really well on it too. So this is a whole bunch of my jigs here. And, uh, you know, it, it's what the easiest way I've found to be able to uh, arrange those. Okay, guys, another one of my favorite boxes. And I'm like I say, I'm starting to switch my gear over, uh, my storage system over to lure lock because of the proprietary lining. You can see like in this one, that the baits just aren't going to come out. Um, but besides that, this, all my, not all, but the majority of my lipless crankbaits. So with that being said, you know, there's a lot of different styles of lipless crankbaits. And to give you an example, you know, your, your traditional rattle traps I have here, um, but one of the rattle traps you just don't see a lot of guys use is this one. And that is a floating rattle trap. And you can see this one's been beat to pieces, absolutely beat to pieces. But I've caught so many really nice fish over the years on it, uh, the last few years. I mean, you can see the teeth marks on it and everything else. I've caught fish up to seven pounds on this. I got one video out where it's a six and a half, a little over that was caught on this particular bait. But it's a great bait to throw. Um, when you're fishing in that floating vegetation in and around it, keeps it up off the weeds in the bottom. You don't have to fight with it uh, all day in and out of the weeds. And here's a, believe us, one. Yeah, this is a newer version right here. I mean, it's just, you can see that one hasn't been beat up and used as much. It's been used some, got a few little marks on it, but nothing like this. And, I, and honestly, I hate touching baits up because when I touch baits up, they seem to not catch as many fish. And I'm sure that's pure superstition and there's no science behind it, but that's, that's just me on that. And then the rest of my baits, you know, I've got these half ounce. These are all half ounce through here. It makes them easy to find, um, you know, and then I try and color coordinate a little bit to make it a little easier. Like I've got my blue hues in here. Uh, you know, this is a big eye shad from Strike King and some more blue. There's an, one of the bleeding shad rattle traps underneath, some modified rattle traps uh, also in the blue or chrome. And then the kind of the, the blue and chartreuse, that sexy shad type look down in here. Uh, some crawl patterns. And then up here, I've got my lighter hues as well, too, for the uh, for the shad patterns. So that's a quick look at the lipless crankbait box. All right, guys, another one of my favorites, square bill crankbaits. And I uh, put a couple video out videos out this past fall where I was catching some really nice fish uh, on square bills. We've had some good tournament results on square bills as well. But this is my square bill box. There's a few that are missing. Um, I just got them actually in another place I wasn't able to get to today. But this is how I kind of lay my square bills out. Um, you know, I, I tend to go, th this one's a little out of the norm. These, these are silent square bills. In other words, no rattles or anything in them. So that's why I've kind of got a shad pattern and a crawl pattern here together. Then my shad patterns and then getting into the, the lighter color chartreuses and kind of the uh, crawled ab patterns here too. And there's, I've got some bandits. Uh, that's a Livingston. That uh, This one right here, that, that's another bandit. This one right here is a uh, Bill Lewis one that makes rattle trap, square bill. And these right here, these four, especially this one right here, has been so hot this past year for me as far as catching fish. And that is an XPS Express from uh, HGO Express from Academy. It's been a fantastic bait uh, this past year. But that's how I have my square bills laid out in here. And they're also in the lure lock where you can turn that thing all the way upside down, give it a shake, and they're not going anywhere. All right, guys, so the next box here is another crankbait box, and it's the shallow to medium diving crankbaits. And when we take a look at it here, um, you guys probably see I'm a huge fan of wiggle warts. This is one of the original pre Rapala wiggle warts. Um, caught so many nice fish on it. You can see the, the hook rub and all the teeth marks in it. Um, used it a whole lot. Here's one of the Rapala wiggle warts after they bought them out. But anyway... Big wiggle wart fan. These are my medium divers. And then I've got a lot of bandit crankbaits too. And I'll show you in the next box. This is a 200 series bandit and can't khaki color. So I'm a big fan of a uh, of band. It's got bandits, some Rapalas in here. Um, I've got some Bagley's. This is a Bagley's bait. I've got some bomber flat sides, but these are my medium diving crankbaits. And uh, so you can see 
what I'm doing is stair stepping them down as far as, you know, lipless crankbaits and my medium divers. And then the next box here will show us, I got some uh, deep diving crankbaits. All right, guys. So the last uh, hard box before we get into all the pockets and stuff and uh, some of the other bags I've got is deep diving crankbaits. I don't have a ton of them. Um, you can take a look here because um, I don't fish a whole bunch. But when I do fish a little bit, not necessarily deep diving crankbait, but mid range. Once again, I'm a, these are some 200 series uh Bandits, because I'm a big Bandit fan. Uh, that's a 300 series Bandit right there. Uh, caught a lot of nice fish on those as well. And you, you'll notice in a lot of these crankbaits and other baits that if, if uh, like for example, this 200 series um, Bandit right here, if I've got one of them, I've probably got two or three of them if I do pretty well on it, like this one here. It's got got a little bit different setup on it as far as I always, t you know, a lot of times I'll try and take that, like I showed in another video, the uh, split ring off and put an oval split ring so I'm not tying off on the split and things like that. But I've probably got three of these pearl white um, bandits because I don't do so well on them if I lose one. Uh, like with this, I've always got a always got a backup to it. Um, and then I've got some of the bigger Shad Series baits. I've got a Rapala SR7 underneath this and uh, got the Rapala SR5s. Not necessarily really deep diving because I don't fish a lot of deep ledges and things like that here. Um, in southern Indiana, but with that being said, I've got some swim baits. This is my deep diving box here. All right, guys. So you can kind of see here on the on the boxes I have them arranged. So you know my top waters, then my swim baits and creature baits, my jigs, and then when I get into the hard baits, for me it's easiest to kind of have everything lined up. Where I've got my lipless, my square bills, my medium running to deeper diving crank baits. So it kind of goes by depth of how I line up my hard baits. That's the quickest way for me to find them. Now we start getting into the pockets over here. On the far end over here, I'll take both of these out here. This is all chatterbaits, jackhammers, and other such. I absolutely, if you guys watch the channel, you know I fish a ton of chatterbaits along with spinnerbaits, and I catch a lot of really nice fish on them, or at least I have the past couple years. But this box is all, um, like I say, chatterbaits and uh, jackhammers. This is trailers for it. And I'll use some of the swim bait trailers, and I'll also use some of the uh, uh, swim bait trailers creature baits and things like that for them. But anyway, um, you know, I mean, you can see these are pretty chipped up and used. You know, that's that's the uh, the one that was a kind of a hot color this past year. I didn't do as well on it as I did these shad colored, um, these shad colored jackhammers. But I've got a little bit of everything in here from the uh, green pumpkin, which I did really well on. And, uh, you know, I've got a couple of each color uh, as well to the all my shad series. So my, my my chatter baits I line out with the dark colors and then my shad series and also what kind because this is for example this is a jackhammer uh, but these in here are all the classic chatter baits and I can switch the skirts out on those which I like a lot and I keep a whole bunch of extra skirts in here like bluegill colored, shad colored, more bluegill, a different shade of bluegill. I'm real big on the bluegill colored skirts just because uh, I can pop those on as conditions dictate on the water and on the fly really helps me out a lot. Okay, so we'll get a little more into the uh, the chatterbait pockets here, what I've got. This is just some more of the trailers, like for example, this is one of my favorites right here. This is the uh, Z-Man Razor Shads. Um, love these, and I've got several different colors, but you know, I'll, I'll keep these in the side pockets. You know, the Z-Man stuff with that Elastec, you can't mix it in with any other kind of plastic or it'll start melting together. Uh, Rage Swimmers, and I've got some other uh, styles too, for example. I mean, these are these are going to be the swim bait, the paddle style baits, and then I've got different colors of flukes, yum, and zoom that I'll use as trailers on the chatter baits. Sometimes spinner baits as well. But that's kind of everything that's down here in these side pockets is just more trailers on this end for my chatter baits, and I keep that all together on that side of the box so it's easy and quick for me to find when I need it. All right, guys. So now we'll get into the top inside top flat pocket. What I keep in there. This is all soft plastics, and it's usually my stuff that I use for like drop shotting, uh, shaky heads, finesse worm fishing. It's just stuff like that, like these, you know, these fish hooies and different. Ones. I've even got a few extra packs for uh, for Ned rigs and such. But these are worms normally that I use, or plastics that I use uh, for either uh, fishing completely weedless or fishing. Uh, shaky heads and such. So that all is from the top pocket up here. A few more that are in here. So all this stuff is crammed in that one top pocket up there to uh, fish 
my finesse style baits, plastic baits. All right, guys, now I'm going to get into the, the other side pocket over here. What I keep over here is my terminal tackle. So I'll keep all my uh, weights and stuff if I'm going to be Texas rigging or punching or Carolina rigs, all that good stuff, extra hooks. Um, got all my extra hooks and stuff, and not only that, but a little uh, first aid kit for bandages and stuff, because I always at some point during the season, several times, end up running a hook through my finger or uh, something of that nature, cutting it with a knife. But these are where I'm, like I say, I'm getting in, I've got all my bobber stops in here for for pegging those weights when I'm, when I'm running uh, Texas rigs on bullet weights. And then, like I say, I've got some of the bigger egg weights and things like that in my um, different and some brass and beads and stuff for making Carolina rigs. So I've got all that in there. And then um, more bullet weights, more bobber stops, and even some stuff for drop shotting, different drop shotting type weights. All right, guys, now we're going to kind of work down the front of the tackle box here. Um, of course, I got the sunglasses holder here, and this is just where I keep a spare pair of sunglasses in here because, you know, it's kind of like when you're on the water, like anything else. Um, I like to have two of everything if I can. So I have my sunglasses I'm wearing. I'll have a spare pair in here. Um, along the front here, I've got two pairs of scissors. I've actually got another set too because two is one and one is none. It's kind of the old saying. So I'll have my two, two you know, they'll both cut mono, fluoro, and obviously braid as well. I've got my, my small set of pliers here, which have been run through the mill. Nothing fancy, just something you get at Walmart back in the hardware section for about a buck and a half and then I've got a I've got a nicer set of pliers that I'll use and these have split rings on them because I do change split rings sometimes out in the boat uh, as far as hook sizes it's got the line cutters on them uh, crimpers whatever you need but I've got a nicer set of pliers and plus removing fish hooks as well so I keep at least two sets of pliers with me all the time and then on the front here as well when you open up the main pouch I've got two sets of scales and I've actually got two other sets of scales I keep in another box and then all kinds of trailers and just miscellaneous stuff. So I've got jig trailers here, smaller ones. I've got the paddle styles. Um, these are the, the crawl bait ones. This is probably one of my favorite jig trailers of all time and I just don't see a lot of guys fish it as much anymore with these little swimming chunks. Man, I can't tell you, just rigged up with the old black and blue jig or blue go color jig with this as a trailer. Uh, and a spacer, how many nice bass over the years I've caught on this little trailer here. But uh, like I said, this is all different tra twin tail grub trailers. Um, I mean, you name it, there's all kinds of trailers I've got in here uh, that I keep up in this front pouch, along with some other just miscellaneous stuff. Dye, so I can dye the tips of some of the plastics and stuff like that when I need to. Uh, I've got a little box of tools, and I've also got just some other spare parts for reels and such. All right, guys, finally we'll get into the back of the tackle bag here. I'll show you what I've got in that. Then I'll show you what I use uh, if I'm not wanting to lug this monstrosity of a tackle bag around. You know, this is great if I'm, like say, fishing out of my smaller boat or the bigger boat, uh, tournament fishing. This is what I'll, I'll, I'll keep the majority of my gear in. I'll show you this, and I'll show you how I scale it down to be more portable and do different things, like if I'm just fishing, you know, with somebody else for a few hours one day or pond hopping, bank walking, what have you. But with that being said, we'll get into the back here. This is just all kinds of mainly crawls and stuff, miscellaneous plastics that are in here. It's kind of a mess. There's no kind of to it, but I, I do have an idea of what's in here, which is kind of crazy because there's just the sal you know, I keep my salamanders in here. These are all crawls together. I keep the traditional plastic worms, um, some other stick worms, and I'll show you my stick bait box here in a second too. More salamanders. And I've got some some backup bubblegum colored. Uh, this is the Bass Pro Shops version of the Cinco. This is the Sticko. Uh, more of the big 10 inch plastic worms. One of my favorite old school. I can only find these on eBay anymore. Gill Raker plastic worms. I'm telling you, Gill Raker in my mind was the best plastic worm ever made. And they're getting harder and harder to find because they haven't made them in years. Made by Zeta Bait. There's some four inch rakers. But anyway, so a little hodgepodge of plastics back here. Uh, mainly creature baits and some of the plastic worms. All right, guys. Now I'm going to show you what I use if I'm if I'm pond hopping or boat hopping, you know, back and forth, and I don't want to pack everything out of the big 
tackle box with me and I kind of have an idea of what type of baits I want to throw that day. I use a backpack, fishing backpack. This is the best thing since sliced bread that I've been using for several years rather than a, you know trying to drag several bags along or a duffel bag. But what I do is I always usually will take it with me if I'm out in the boat for sure because I keep a spinnerbait binder. And I'll show you in that. It goes this spinnerbait binder goes everywhere with me because you guys know it's my favorite bait to throw. I've been making them now for about 18, 19 years. And this has probably 40, 50 spinnerbaits in it. I've got more spinnerbaits in another box. But it is spinnerbaits, the majority of, that I've made, some are, some are bought. And then this is buzz baits in the back. So I've got my buzz baits in here and then all my spinnerbaits in here. And I keep them in this nice little binder. And I can throw them in the backpack or I can just take it with me. Um, attached to the big tackle bag as well. And then what I also have in here is this a cheap little soft pack, uh, Walmart special, but it does the trick to get my soft plastics uh, out with me. Cause I you know I love fishing stick baits too. So this is nothing but full of packaged stick baits and stick baits in the box here. Let me get them out here. So this is all, and you can see I stay pretty neutral on my colors and such. Um, for the most part, but this is my stick bait box, and then what I'll have with that is also all my hooks. And I kind of try and keep them labeled up, but I've got all my different offset worm hooks, shaky head hooks, my wacky worm hooks and tool, uh, Nico rig weights, bobber stops, uh, things to make power spinners. And you guys may have seen the, the video on that the power spinners to hook on to the um, if you're not, I'll, I can leave a link down in the description below with the, the, uh, these little pigtails to make power spinners to use while you're, uh, fishing with the, uh, stick baits. Let's see if I can find one. Here. Yeah, here's one right here. So I just made that up myself. Attaches to the back of these and they work like a champ when you can't get a bite, it seems like, on anything else. Cheap to make, great to use. So these I have in there and then also, um, it's kind of a hodgepodge of basically make more backup Cinco's and Cinco's and then stuff for Ned Rigs. Got the hot bubble gum, got the green pumpkin and some more green pumpkin for using all the Ned Rigs. All right, guys. So a little more on the backpack that I use here. Uh, you guys saw how I just throw these soft cider packs, um, you know, in here to take with me for the day when I'm like my spinner baits and my stick baits and things like that. But I can take these out and I can actually fit a, a couple of the 3700 series boxes like this in there. And then this bottom section here will open up and um, it will hold more boxes. Like right now I've actually got a couple stuff rigged up for surf fishing, saltwater boxes in order to hold three of these smaller boxes. And then at the top section here, there's more storage, and I usually put, uh, oh, it depends, you know, soft baits, pliers, scales, things like that in this top pocket. It's got pouches on each side to hold more gear. I mean, plenty of pockets, plenty of storage, really for anything else you need. The only thing I recommend when you get a backpack is make sure it's got good padding in the back and uh, through the shoulder straps if you're putting a significant amount of weight in it. Or if you're like, we go down a couple times a year to the beach and we surf fishing and you're walking, you know, you could be walking, a lot of times we'll do a mile and a half, two miles, three miles in a day or more surf fishing. So you want something that's pretty comfortable to wear. So that's the whole setup um, that I use, whether I'm just throwing some stuff in it for the day or uh, whether I'm packing some of this stuff with me um, just to go pond hopping, um, fishing different stripper pits, small lakes, things like that, walk in the bank. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that look around the tackle box uh, today. Hope you got a little something out of it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. You can leave me a like down below. That'd be great, too. Hit that bell notification button so you get notified when I upload new videos to YouTube. Uh, also, if there were some baits that you saw that you're interested in and you want to know more about, let me know. I'd be happy to do videos for you guys, uh, some how-to stuff. I've already got some, some videos out there on uh, jigs and square bills and uh, chatter baits and things like that, but I'd be happy to do more for you or tips and techniques on other baits that you may, may have saw in there. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys watching. Once again, your time's important to me. And remember, until the next video, get out there and fish.